Another way we can change our view of the data in an Excel pivot table is to use sorting. And sorting allows us to change it from ascending to descending and so on. And one of the ways I can access the sorting options is to come up here to the Options tab, click on that, and I've got a whole group called Sort. Now, sorting will allow me to change the order of any of these fields. But it's important to note, if you remember from before, I've got these grouped. So for instance here, I've got team and then the associates that belong to that team. So when I sort based on a upper level group, because this one's on top, if I sort by the outer layer here, um, the values within it will go along with that group. So let me show you what I'm saying. If I have team highlighted and I choose Z to A, those team members that belong to team B moved from down here and followed to come up here. But if you notice, they were unaffected by the sort order I chose for team because they're still sorted in ascending order, not in descending order. So if I want to change within the group, I just have to click on that field. So this, in this instance, I'm clicking on the associate field. And I come down here and I choose descending. And now they're ordered correctly there. So they will uh, change within the group. However, they do not change in complete order. So what I mean is it doesn't start with Chelsea and work its way all the way down uh, to Rick or Tiffany. So if I wanted to do that, I'd have to come over here and remove my team grouping so that associates were by themselves and were all together. Because they're separated by the team group, uh, they don't sort independently like that. They sort just within the group. I can do the same thing with dates up here in the column labels. What's nice about dates, if I choose the month field and I come up here and I choose to say descending, the nice thing is that it's not doing it by the first letter of the month. Instead, it actually recognizes which month comes first, and it's organizing it that way. So uh, I've got March, February, January, and then, of course, June through April. And again, you notice that since these are grouped by quarter, it's not running from June to January like I might want it to. If I wanted to do that, I just need to remove the quarters grouping, and it'll work correctly at that point. Now, what we just did using the sort options up here in the ribbon, we call that external sorting. And external sorting works just fine normally. However, it's not quite as permanent as what we'll talk about next, which is internal sorting. So external sorting, I can do that. It's no problem at all. But if I change some of the fields in my pivot table, reorganize things, I may lose those sorting options. It might not follow along with it and remember that I wanted to sort months in descending order. If I want something, uh, a different way of doing it internally, and that sometimes tends to stick a little better when we're moving around uh, pieces of the pivot table, I come here to these little drop down arrows that are next to my row labels and column labels. And when I click that drop down arrow, the first thing you'll see is I've got select a field. Since I have two different fields in my row labels, it wants me to tell it which one I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to say team. And I'm going to change it to A to Z. So now it's reversed this back to team A to Z. And I can come back in here and do the same thing again. I can click on uh, the select a field option and choose associate and change that back to A to Z. And now that's changed back to A to Z. So that's internal filtering or internal sorting. You can also click on more sort options. And that allows me to do a few other things uh, I can even click more options there and I have some other customized options but that's the basics of using sorting and it just allows you to organize the information a little bit differently.